toss it up, and we are underway from Blacksburg. The NC State Wolfpack, one of five remaining unbeaten teams in the country, putting that record on the line. Here in Blacksburg, the Hokies swept the Wolfpack in both regular season meetings last year. First attempt, Sanaya Rivers cannot get it to go. Here comes Georgia Amor. Kayla King lines up the three. Zoe Brooks inserted into the starting lineup, looking inside for Mimi Collins on the break. Great pass from Zoe Brooks. She does not look like a freshman getting the start today. Already has a triple-double under her belt this season. Regular starting five for Virginia Tech. Matilda Ekros, Misha, Kayla King joining one of the best duos in the country. Liz Kitley, Georgia Amor. Ek. Pulls up for the shot and gets the points. Eck has to be able to put the ball on the floor because NC State specifically is going to try to run her off the three-point line. So a very good job by her to adjust. There's your starting five for NC State. As you mentioned, no River Baldwin. Hurt her right ankle toward the end of the third quarter in that overtime win against Florida State on Thursday. Out indefinitely for the Ooh. Wolfpack. How about that move? Got a little whoop from you. It did, but then Georgia Amor got her hand in there. And maybe gave Zoe Brooks a little bit of a stare and said, look, I'm the veteran here. This is my <laughs> arena. My but house. I love what I've seen from Brooks so far, not being afraid at all. There are those familiar starters. The Hokies almost the same starting five in every game so far this season. Virginia Tech coming in 11-2. and two. Both of these teams 2-0 and oh in conference play. Off goes Amor. Usually that one rolls on in. Brooks, open lane to the basket. She'll take it with the left. Nobody picked up Zoe Brooks. She got the rebound, and nobody even tried to guard her until she was inside the three-point line. That cannot happen for Virginia Tech in transition defense. Amor. Free throw line. Rattles out. Madison Hayes pulls down the rebound for the Wolfpack. Zaya James, leading scorer for NC State on the season, averaging 15.7, top 10 in the ACC. How's that for her first two? My goodness, Isaiah James. Took it left. She is a lefty, but then hung under the rim to finish on the opposite side. Wow. Pretty emphatic start for NC State here on the road in this packed house, Castle Coliseum. Amor for three. She's been a little off to start with her shot. And there's a double on Kitley. First time Kitley touched the ball, they doubled her inside. No surprise there. Rarely, if ever, does Liz Kitley, the two-time ACC Player of the Year, get single coverage. This is going to be a foul called on James. Blocking foul on James, but here on the other end, going left, hanging in the air. Jen, did she even see the rim? <laughs> she saw it barely at the she end. But Isaiah James, you mentioned, NC State's leading scorer, has increased her scoring average by nearly nine points per game, also shooting so much better from three. King ready and waiting. Hokie's a little off. Best three-point shooting team in the ACC. Six points in the paint for the Wolfpack so far. Mimi Collins looking to add a couple more. Can't rebound for the ACC's leading rebounder, Liz Kitley. NC State is going to try to attack Liz Kitley with Mimi Collins on the perimeter, trying to get her in foul trouble. That was a good job by Kitley to play defense without foul. Foul called in the paint. Westmore's NC State Wolfpack team coming in here with that unbeaten record. Suffered two losses to Virginia Tech last year, but this has been a good series here as of late between these two. And Wes really appreciating the challenge. He knows he's going to get from Kenny Brooks' teams. It's been a great series. And by the way, that was the second foul on Isaiah James. That's a game changer for NC State with their leading scorer now on the bench. And Virginia Tech's leading scorer gets going right there as Liz Kitley gets her first points. And Lacey Steele with the ball in her hands here into the game. And James going to the bench for those two early fouls. Collins has really been shooting it well. Big rebound pulled down by Hayes. Collins giving another open look. 
And interesting that it is Kintley who's got to come out and guard Mimi Collins on the three-point line. Mimi Collins starting in place of River Baldwin. So Kintley is going to be drawn out. They're going to try to use Collins' quickness. And that time Collins settled for threes. Good quick turnaround. That is money in the bank. Virginia Tech loves the back screen to get Liz Kitley an open look. And to me, Liz Kitley is the best shooting post player in the country. Sonia Rivers to steal. Her three is good. Lacey Steele, a true freshman coming off the bench here for NC State. Impressive to knock down her first attempt. Freshmen are going to have to help pick up some of that slack with River Baldwin on the bench for NC State. Here goes Kitley. Steele with the rebound. Freshman out of Edmond, Oklahoma, has appeared in every game off the bench so far for NC State. Rivers, smooth. Smooth for sure from Sanaya Rivers. Remember, she had that 33-point game against UConn in November when the Pack took down the Huskies. Yeah, 33 and 10, by the way. Her first career double-double, the 10 rebounds. Travel called. We have an NC State, but Kelly, I know you're interested in how much the three ball is going to have a presence in this game. You look at Virginia Tech's numbers, they are one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country, make over 10 per game. They're 0 for 3 so far. NC State is very good at guarding the three. I feel like NC State's done a good job so far. Of course, Virginia Tech's shots aren't falling, but that length of NC State defensively on the perimeter is a big advantage for the pack. Amor and King, both in the top five all-time in terms of three-pointers made in Virginia Tech history. Olivia Summiel into the game there for Virginia Tech. Commits the foul on Madison Hayes as she drives to the basket. Madison Hayes, senior out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Her third year with the Wolfpack after transferring from Mississippi State. Averages 11 points per game. Shooting Kelly nearly 43% from three this season. She's having a very good year for NC State. Is a transfer, but this is her third year with the pack, so she knows Westmore's system very well. Pokies trailing the third ranked Wolf Pack. Amor, can she get one to fall? You betcha! Georgia Amor. She's never going to stop shooting. Got a good look there. And maybe that will get Virginia Tech going offensively. Amor over her first three. Now has her first points in the game. Lacey Steele in for Isaiah James, who picked up two quick fouls. Of course, NC State also without River Baldwin in this game. Sanaya Rivers. Is she going to have to step up her production? Was out three games, came back for the conference opener at Virginia. Have we seen enough Kitley yet? Short on the turnaround. Kitley's fadeaway is so good that I understand why she's going to it, but she has such a size advantage on Mimi Collins. I'd love to see a shot fake and attack the rim at least a few times from Kitley early in this game. Steele knocked one down already. Make it two from the same spot. A sharpshooter out of Oklahoma is the Oklahoma Gatorade Player of the Year back-to-back -back state champion out of Edmond, Oklahoma. The moment does not look too big for Lacey Steele. Very important minutes for her right now with Isaiah James on the bench. One of the questions for this Virginia Tech team as the shot clock gets to five is who else is going to help Kitley and Amor? They do an awful lot on their own, but can they get enough from their supporting cast? It will certainly be something we look at throughout this one. And we've got more women's basketball coming your way today. Quadruple header on ECC Network. Georgia Tech and Pitt coming up at 2. And then Florida State going to Clemson. You do not want to miss the Tania Lassen show. She has simply had three 30-point games to start off ACC play. And then at 6 p.m., Boston College, Syracuse. Madison Hayes and the three-point barrage continues. Well, we're seeing some threes go down, but it's for the Wolfpack, not the Hokies. NC State does shoot about 34% on the year, so they're very capable, but NC State beating Virginia Tech at their own game right now. 
Carly Wenzel on the floor for the Hokies gets it inside to Kitley, who is fouled. First foul against Mimi Collins. So let's talk Kitley a little bit because you just started to get into it, Kelly, in terms of what you'd like to see from her because you feel like Virginia Tech should have an advantage with her in the paint, especially without Riverball. Definitely, and she just got one foul on Mimi Collins there. If you get a second foul on Collins, you change the game. So I think next time Liz Kitley touches the ball inside, she's got to give a pump fake, she's got to get to the rim, or at least put the ball on the floor, make Mimi Collins move. It's tough for her, Jen, because her jumper is so smooth. She is, to me, the best jump shooting post player in the nation. But at this point, if you, and I know Mimi Collins just was subbed out because Wes Moore is understanding the situation, you still got to be aggressive and attack these post players because of their lack, lack of depth for NC State. Mallory Collier into the game now. Place of Collins. Steal. Lucky break for the Hokies. Steal had just hit two. You yeah. could not give her an open look there. You saw some of those incredible numbers for Liz Kitley while she was shooting the free throw. Six points in the game today. King has lost it out of bounds, but I really love what Kenny Brooks had to say about Liz Kitley. He said, I tell Hokie Nation all the time, don't get bored with her greatness. We, we almost take for granted, don't we, that she's going to put up 20 and 10 right. every night. She had 27 and 12 at Wake Forest on Thursday. And no one's surprised at all. It's just kind of, oh, ho-hum. That's what Liz <laughs> Kinley does. But we cannot take that for granted. She's just had an incredible career and continues to build on it. High aspirations for this year as well. For this entire Virginia Tech team coming off their first Final Four a year ago. Creeping back, trying to anyway in this one. Wenzel to the basket. I like that attack from Wenzel. Georgia Amor spinning through the air, My taking goodness. it away. You think this crowd loves them some Georgia Amor? Jen, when I walked in the gym, I saw two little girls who were here an hour and a half before the game, and I said, who's your favorite player? And they said Georgia, mm -hmm. of course. I thought Kitley would probably get a lot of votes, but that's no surprise. There's Liz Kitley. Eight in the game now for the two-time ACC Player of the Year. Virginia Tech, which is the most points the Hokies have allowed in the first quarter all season, but they are climbing back into this one. Down six now, Zoe Brooks. The crowd getting into it. Virginia Tech going to try to hold the ball here, get a decent look. Virginia Tech also went to zone on that last possession, Jen. Let's keep an eye on that in the second quarter. About a three-second difference, shot clock and game clock. First quarter about to unwind here at Virginia Tech. A more showing off all the moves, setting up Kitley. Zoe Brooks will take it herself at the buzzer. What a first court. And they are still undefeated. Virginia Tech trying to spoil that, Jen. Yeah, NC State 3-0 against the top 25. Virginia Tech, meanwhile, looking for their first win against a ranked opponent. And what a way to start the second quarter. Karis Baker, welcome to the game. How about these freshmen? You had Lacey Steele <laughs> hitting two big threes for NC State. Now Karis Baker, a big three for the Hokies. And the Hokies still in that zone, Jen, right now, trying to be active, big hands, trying to guard the three better in that 2-3 zone. Yeah, because NC State had really started to shoot it well. After six points in the paint early, they started knocking down the threes, 4 of 11 from three with the Wolf Pack in that first quarter. But when you talk about balance, I mean, this is unreal that they have six players, Kelly, in double figures. One of two teams in the nation to have that number. The other one is LSU. They have incredible balance. Of course, River Baldwin out today, so other players have to step up. And NC State unable to get it in. You can feel this crowd ready to explode. If it's a, a tip and a steal from Georgia Amor in the first quarter, this time a good defensive possession. See what the Hokies can do with it. Wolfpack have missed their last five, so maybe that zone is working out for Virginia Tech. I know that was a miss there, but I'm not sure there's a better passer 
than Georgia Amor in the country, especially attacking the paint and kicking out to three-point shooters. She's so good at that. Why is that? What is it about her that, that makes her so good? It's her vision, first of all, but also, and I think that ball was tipped. I'm that's, surprised they called it NC State ball. Well, that's what Kenny Brooks was calling for initially, was that it was tipped. And they can't review that unless Kenny Brooks were to challenge it. But yeah, I definitely thought that was tipped. With, with Amor, though, it's her speed, her vision, and she also has a great ability to kind of hang in the air while passing. You don't generally advise that if you're coaching fundamentals, but it's Georgia Amor, and she just kind of defies logic. Now, this could be important. Mimi Collins just picked up her second foul on this play for NC State. Isaiah James already has two for the Wolf Pack. And this one just going after a rebound. That's massive, Jen. Two of NC State's starters, uh, starters have two fouls, and we'll see how NC State handles it if they bring one of those young players off the bench for Mimi Collins. Kintley working on Collins with those two fouls. Here is Georgia Amor. Baker, open for three. four-time NBA All-Star, she says, I'm not, I'm not afraid of this moment. <laughs> Tie game at 19. And a travel as Maddie Cox drags her foot. Karis Baker has come off the bench for Virginia Tech and has hit two threes to start this second quarter. She has gotten the crowd back into this game. Her dad, Vin, in the Hartford Hall of Fame, 15 years in the NBA. Showing off a stroke of her own. A couple of triples early. That's a little hoop scoop with Vin Baker. Her mom also played at Hartford, so she is the daughter of two <laughs> basketball student athletes. I'm not sure she had a choice <laughs> as to which sport she was going to end up playing. Oh, Kelly, you always give the choice. You just give a little <laughs> nudge onto the yeah, basketball court. just a little nudge in the right direction. Amy Collins going to come to the bench now for NC State. Lizzie Williamson, the 6'5" grad transfer from Southern Utah into the game. It feels like right now, this is where NC State is missing River Baldwin, who is out with a right ankle injury. She was incredible last game, had 21 and eight. And they're in bringing in quarters. some, in, yeah, in three quarters, they're bringing in some young players that just don't have the presence of River Baldwin inside. These are the moments NC State's going to have to manage if they want to get out of here unscathed. Can they handle playing with some of their other big time players on the bench? Mimi Collins, Isaiah James. This was the moment right toward the end of the third quarter on Thursday night that took River Baldwin out. We thought it was a knee. Turned out to be her right ankle, which I think is good news, actually. But she's out indefinitely. Wolfpack have gone cold. Jump ball. Jump ball. And, you know, you talk to Wes Moore, and he had talked about how well River had been playing this season. I mean, really looked like almost a different player in her second year with the Wolfpack after transferring from Florida State. She gave them that inside presence, Kelly, that really allowed their guards to do what they do, right? She's an X factor for them. The way she was rebounding it, taking five charges against Florida State. She's a former McDonald's All-American, always had the talent, but in her fifth year was really thriving in Westmore's system. Tania Rivers with three on the shot clock. Puts Wolfpack back out in front. Five in the game for Sanaya. With all this youth on the floor, I think Sanaya Rivers has to take over and have the ball in her hand a lot on offense. Kidley. You know, Kenny Brooks talked to us about wanting Kitley to just read the game a little faster. He said she's an avid reader. He wants her to skim, not read every word so deeply, right? But does it feel a little rushed at times? Well, it's tough because she has to go fast because the double team is always coming. That time, NC State didn't double her, and I think for Liz Kitley, it sometimes is a shock 
when she doesn't get doubled, she can take more time, take a dribble, try to attack the rim. But NC State's doing a good job of mixing up when they're doubling Kitley. Kitley, 8.7 rebounds in the game already. And good hands from Hayes to take it away for NC State. Madison Hayes all the way for two. Madison Hayes kind of lulled Virginia Tech to sleep. Kitley made a pass. That's routine. But Madison Hayes was there. Great play. Virginia Tech coming off their first ever ACC tournament championship a year ago. Picked to win it again this year. NC State finished eighth last year. Picked eighth. Much lower than we're typically used to seeing the Wolfpack. Four on the shot clock. Still won't go for Amor. She just has to laugh after that one. Not getting any of those friendly rolls she should be used to at home. Williamson. Virginia Tech has to take more advantage right now. No Mimi Collins, no Isaiah James. They will be back in the second half. They're slowing it up now, but I would go, Jen. This is the time where you've got to be able to create an advantage with those two players out. Kitley. Far away from the basket. That's a good thing if you're NC State. Now she works her way closer. Three to shoot for Kitley. Double team is there and does its job. Jump ball the call. It'll stay with Virginia Tech. They'll have two seconds on the shot clock to work with. When we come back, Hokies trailing the Wolfpack by four. Lee defensively. On this play, first of all, Liz Kitley should not be catching it that high. That's a tough spot for her. Secondly, NC State doubles on the dribble. They bring Hayes, then Saniya Rivers, who ties up Liz Kitley. So they don't double right away. They wait for Liz Kitley to take a dribble, and then they double. They're switching up when they're doubling Kitley. It's very difficult for Kitley to read what they're going to do when they play her like that. Eck. Off the inbounds, had two seconds. That was all she needed. And those are the first points that Virginia Tech Kelly has scored in the paint all night, all day. Unbelievable. And that was great execution by Virginia Tech going to X. She had a mismatch inside, knowing she had to shoot it quickly. Two point lead for the Wolfpack. Still no Isaiah James, leading scorer for NC State. But this freshman, Lacey Steele, has hit a couple of threes off the bench. And Virginia Tech right now giving Liz Kitley a breather. They have freshman Clara Strack in at the five. Eck, transfer from Michigan State. Puts it over to Baker. Benches for both teams may well have a big say in how things go today. Hayes, yes! Another three goes down. Nine points in the game for Madison Hayes. She's been good. Nine points, five rebounds on just four shot attempts. Fifth three-point make for the Wolfpack as a team. Shot up and a little too strong. Boy, NC State rebounds the ball so well. Rebounding margin first in the ACC. They're top six in the country in total rebounds. Well, we are really excited. Gymnastics is coming your way on ACC Network Friday and Saturday night at 9 Eastern. It's all part of three quad meets. We're featuring the first one on Friday with North Carolina, Arizona, Boise State, and Nebraska. So you can check out all your favorite gymnastics skills, bars, beam, vault, and floor. First year officially we get to see gymnastics in the ACC. Kitley. Fading away. I like that from Kitley, though. She was patient. She went to see if the double was coming, and then she put the ball on the floor. That's more of what I think she needs to do inside. Zoe Brooks came down the floor with those glasses up on her forehead. Now she's got them down <laughs> again. Just a little too much. Good hands defensively from Virginia Tech to disrupt that dribble and the rhythm of the freshman Zoe Brooks. Jen, you mentioned rebounding. Virginia Tech has one offensive rebound in this half. They have not been able to get any second chance points. They love to shoot threes off of offensive rebounds. 
but NC State has shut that down. Amor to Kitley. That's how it's done. Much better positioning for Kitley. If she gets the ball that low, that deep on the block, she's going to score. Ten points for Kitley to go along with seven rebounds. Rivers a little off on the pass. And as talented as Sanaya Rivers is, you just wonder sometimes if she feels that extra weight that she knows she needs to carry in a game like this. She's trying to make the extra pass, make the right play. I'd love to see her attack a little more. She is so good around the rim. ACC sixth player of the year a year ago in her first year at the Wolfpack. There's a double team on Kitley Amor slicing through Baker. There's an offensive rebound. No three to be had. Zania Rivers in for the block, and then there's all kinds of contact. It's going to go against the Hokies, though, the call. Zania Rivers, I thought that was a clean block. She gets the block on Kayla, Kayla King, and then Kayla King goes for the offensive rebound, goes over her back. Big play by Sanaya Rivers on the defensive end. Kayla King called for the foul. Under a minute to play. I mean, this quarter has flown by two, and there goes Sanaya Rivers to the basket. That's what we're talking about, Jen. Get your best athlete, go into the rim, let her make a play. Kitley, good. She's got a dozen. Best jump shooting post player in the country. Three point game between the two teams that have combined to win the last four ACC tournament titles. Virginia Tech, the defending champs. NC State had a string of three in a row prior to that. Seven to shoot for the unbeaten Wolfpack. Brooks, Rivers. Kitley gets herself in position for the rebound. Amor launches it up! Oh. She made it closer than most, but we've got a three-point game at halftime. NC State leading Virginia Tech. What a first half between these two ACs. She's got to continue to try to read this NC State defense. They've done a good job, Jen, of switching things up. 12 points, eight rebounds for Liz Kitley in the first half as we get started with quarter number three from Blacksburg. Isaiah James back in the game for the first time since those first three and a half minutes and she announces her presence with a bucket. Jen, that is so hard to do. Isaiah James has been sitting on the bench for about 30 minutes of real time. She gets back in the game and it's like she never left. Amor just has... Been a little bit off for herself. As you mentioned, she's passing the ball well. She has six assists in the game, but is just one of nine from the floor. She's missed a few layups as well. And here's Isaiah James. So smooth. One dribble pull up. Doesn't even look like she's been sitting for most of this game with two fouls. And keep an eye, Jen, on that last play. Georgia Amor got hit in the stomach. She looks like she's in a little bit of pain. So let's keep an eye on that. Starting five back on the floor for NC State. Sanaya Rivers has nine in the game. No River Baldwin for the Wolfpack today. So Zoe Brooks making her fourth start of the season. It's a 4-0 Wolfpack run to start quarter number three. Kitley. Good for two more. Virginia Tech loves that play and Westmore is livid on the sidelines because Virginia Tech already run that play in this game and has scored and he did not like how Mimi Collins guarded Kitley there. Hayes hit a couple of threes in the first half. Now has another 12 in the game for Madison Hayes. Including three triples. Kitley Collins do the job defensively. There really were not a lot of fouls by either team in the first half. NC State had four team fouls, but two of those 
were on Mimi Collins. The other two were on Isaiah James. So that is going to be something that they need to be wary of here in the second half with a shortened bench. And Liz Kitley has to go at her. That shot that Kitley just took was way too difficult of a shot. Yeah. She needs to attack the rim instead of fading away. And that time, Virginia Tech still in a zone, but a lot of miscommunication. Not sure who's guarding who. Really aggressive start to the half for NC State to equal their largest lead of the game at 10. Starting five back on the floor for Virginia Tech. Boy, do they need that. Kayla King over three in the first half. Knocks down her first triple. Kayla King is one of the best shooters in Virginia Tech history. They've got to get more looks for her. When she scores 10 or more in a game, Jen, they are 27-3. and three. They have to get her involved in the second half. Collins. Short corner is good for Mimi Collins. She's got four points in the game. At a career-high 25 in the Pac's ACC opener against Virginia. Wolfpack have yet to miss this quarter. Now they take it away. James, oh, looks away, and then fights for the rebound herself. Will this go against Isaiah James? NC State foul, number 10. Isaiah looks that James way, that third. is her third personal. First team pass. And of course, we gotta tell you about Ladies Night coming your way, nothing but net. Love those, Kelly, you're a big part of that on Thursdays. After our women's basketball doubleheader, the crew will break down all of the ACC women's basketball action look ahead to what's coming up next that is right here in ACC Network and the ESPN app. I know I'm biased, but nobody covers women's basketball like the ACC Network, so stay tuned with us all season long. And you're right, Jen, Isaiah James picking up the third foul, but Westmore is leaving her in the game as of now. Well, she had to sit so much of that first half. So Westmore willing to roll the dice a little bit here, keep his leading scorer on the floor. James has more fouls than Virginia Tech as a team. <laughs> Just two fouls against the Hokies in the first half. And Mimi Collins starting to heat up. NC State is shooting lights out. Nearly 50% from the floor. Virginia Tech's got to get a hand in the face. Make them put the ball on the floor. Just be a little more aggressive when you're guarding the ball. Because NC State's getting the looks they want. This is a good look here. And a good finish for Matilda Hatt. You're right, though. This quarter in particular, NC State 6 of 7 from the floor. There's a contested shot, but a foul on Amor as Zoe Brooks will go to the line. Zoe Brooks using her size advantage on Amor. This was a nice play by Matilda Eck. Georgia Amor has struggled to shoot it today. She's 1 for 10. Other players have to step up. We've seen Kayla King hit a 3. We just saw Eck there. Virginia Tech's going to need more from those two. Remember NC State coming off an overtime victory. They held on to that unbeaten record just barely on Thursday night with an 88-80 win against Florida State. River Baldwin going out end of the third quarter. Zoe Brooks really stepped up. She made some big baskets, including from the free throw line, to help the Wolfpack get out of that one alive. Kitley. That's what you want to see, attacking the rim. Virginia Tech has missed at least five layups tonight. Well, catch me if you can. Zoe Brooks taking it all the way. Number 35 in the goggles. There's a reason why she's the highest-ranked signee in NC State history, the number three player in this freshman class. And is that the bucket that gets Georgia Amor going? The senior averages 17 points a game. She has five. From the corner. Not on target for Collins. Hokies on the run. They want to run. Something they've been trying to do since their loss to LSU earlier in the season. And it results in an Amor three. The Hokies are not getting back in this game without Georgia Amor. And that's five straight points from one of the best guards in the country. Five from Amor. Six. Oh, run for the Hokies, and they're getting the ball back. This game, NC 
State took some momentum. Virginia Tech's fighting back to stay in it. Zoe Brooks, one of the best freshmen in the country, goes coast to coast. Makes it look easy, but Georgia Amor, she said, not so fast. We've got a good one here in Blacksburg. With no fees or minimums. To cover the college hoops as well. They'll have the latest from all around the conference. That's right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Talking a lot of women's hoops as we get ready for this matchup in particular, Kelly. What a game this is between these two teams. NC State number three, Virginia Tech number 13 in the country. And NC State had opened up as much as a 13-point lead in this quarter. Big block there by the Wolfpack. A couple of threes, though, have helped the Hokies back into it. Virginia Tech, two for two from beyond the arc in this quarter. The way they're gonna get back in this game, I think is with a heavy dose of Amor and Kitley, but also they gotta knock down some threes. Madison Hayes with 14 points in the game, six to shoot, she'll take it, why not? Madison Hayes, Madison Hayes has been tremendous in this basketball game. 17, that's, that was a two by the way, I think they'll review that. Uh, but right now 17 and seven for Hayes. Zoe Brooks acknowledging, yep, my bad, she commits the foul, her first. They gave her two, so yeah, that was a two-point basket, a long two for Hayes. She's been great, though, so efficient. Yeah, one off her season high with 16 points for Madison Hayes, the lead back to double digits for NC State. Olivia Semiel, transfer from Wake Forest, into the game for the Hokies again, Kitley. Always has to have her head on a swivel. Where is the defense coming from? Zoe Brooks. Oh, my. Put on the accelerator. Can't be stopped. Zoe Brooks. This is a special talent. There's a reason why she was McDonald's All-American. And she has made, she's been really good defensively on Amor as well, by the way, but made some yeah. great plays in transition. Helps the defensive effort here. Gets tapped away, but stays with the Hokies. Amor pulls up. And Kitley cleans it up off the glass. And Jen, give Elizabeth Kitley credit. She's had a tough game shooting the ball, six for 15 from the field, but she just keeps going, trying to keep the Hokies within striking distance. Has her 67th, let that sink in for a minute, 67th <laughs> career double-double, 60 points, 10 boards for Kitley. Collins, five on the shot clock, going up against Kitley. Semiel going for the rebound, I think is going to get called for the foul here. Madison Hayes just relentlessly went after that rebound. They called Semiel for the push off. Basically saying she pushed off while boxing out. And that call was made because of Madison Hayes' effort on the offensive glass. Collins, easy look, but can't finish it off the inbounds play. That was a gift. Amor, open, off. Samuel, I mean, she has been working hard on the glass for the Hokies this season. Amor turning the corner, opens up some space for this Kelly. Excellent pass from Georgia Amor. There aren't any other players in the country that I've seen that dribble under the basket. As much as Amor, she gets under the rim and then she makes decisions. Virginia Tech foul number five, Georgia Amor. And what a battle this is on both ends of the floor. Amor and Brooks guarding one another. Amor committing the foul this time as Brooks put the ball on the floor. Zoe Brooks is so calm, Jen. Yeah. It's like she's played in know 20 of these games 20 of these top 15 matchups when she really has it I mean she played Colorado and UConn so that got her ready for this NC State the only team in the country with two wins against teams in the top five and the crowd appreciating that defensive effort of their all-american kidney such good defense by Liz Kidley staying with her hands up moving her feet not bodying Collins. Well done inside. 10 seconds on the shot clock, so plenty of time for Sonia Rivers to work with. There is a foul 
like Kitley would have had the block covered, but I think Kayla King picks it up first. That's her second personal. That is the fourth team foul. Didn't get anywhere near to having anyone in the bonus in the first half. Sonia Rivers shooting foul. We'll have two free throws coming up. Sonia Rivers, one of those really versatile players. She and Alyssa Aspie both, Kelly, would fall into that category. The only players in the ACC in the top 20 in all those categories. Points per game, assists per game, rebounds per game, and steals. That is incredible. Sonia Rivers can do it all. Melissa Aspie and North Carolina traveling to South Bend. Take on 16th ranked Notre Dame later today at 5. Amor under the basket, up and in. Georgia Amor starting to find her way into this game for Virginia Tech. She's got 10 points now. The Hokies are hanging around, Jen. But here's the difference. They're able to get things going offensively. They have to buckle down defensively. NC State is getting what they want on the offensive end. If the Hokies don't get more stops, they're not going to get back in it. Under a minute to play in the third quarter. Lacey Steele back in the game. Hit a couple of big threes. Now hits one from the ACC logo in the paint. She's got eight. It just feels like Virginia Tech is not preventing NC State from doing what they want to do offensively. NC State has looked too comfortable offensively all night. This has been the Georgia Amor yeah. show in the third quarter. She is almost single-handedly keeping Virginia Tech in this one. But you're right. What can the Hokies do on this end? NC State shooting nearly 66% in the third quarter. A miss there from Brooks. A chance for the final shot for Virginia Tech of the quarter. That's what Virginia Tech needs to do. Force NC State to take long jumpers prevent them from getting to the rim. That was a good possession for them defensively. Oh, Amor wanted to dish it off, but Zoe Brooks was wise to it. Great Shot play. doesn't get off in time, but NC State has the lead heading into the fourth quarter. Zoe, Zoe Brooks reading Georgia Amor's eyes and preventing a... We all knew it would be. Coming on the road here at Virginia Tech. What a test for this unbeaten NC State team. Here we go, final quarter. Coming up for you from Blacksburg. And right off the bat, NC State takes it away from Virginia Tech. And look who's the first down the floor. I mentioned that Brooks has been guarding Amor. Amor got going in the third quarter, so Sanaya Rivers has started on Amor defensively. A little more blink from NC State on, on Amor. Now Hayes is hammered on that shot attempt. Nine points for Georgia Amor in that third quarter. Madison Hayes has certainly been a big part of this game today for NC State as Samuel picks up her third foul. Madison Hayes has that title of glue player. I asked Wes Moore about that a couple of games ago. But Sometimes those glue players don't have the numbers to go with it. They just do all the little things. Well, she's doing all the big things, too, in this game in particular. 18 points, 7 rebounds. Kitley. As good as she is at that fadeaway, NC State will take that. An empty possession down the floor. Brooks cutting the lane. Got past Kayla King, but Amor comes away with it. Ferrari speed. You know she loves that bounce pass between the legs behind her. Hasn't gotten the assist for it yet in this game, though she's tried a couple times. Kitley going to work in the paint. That it is better. Is Liz Kitley does not get discouraged. She struggled on that previous possession. They go right back to her, and she goes right back to one of her moves. But I really liked it how she did put the ball on the floor there. Made Collins guard her a little longer. 20 points, 10 rebounds, right about her average for Liz Kitley in this game, trying to keep Virginia Tech close. Collins says, uh-uh. Massive shot. NC State, their depth, their depth is so good. 
You have Madison Hayes beating you. You think you can, okay, maybe I'll give Mimi Collins a three. Maybe I'll take that. No, you won't. She makes it. <laughs> they just keep coming at you with different weapons. Amor! Nine in the third quarter, 11 now since halftime, 14 in the game, and Virginia Tech's made five of their last six. This game will be decided on the defensive end for the Hokies. They have to get some stops. Haynes off the screen. Another three goes down, and Kenny Brooks needs a timeout. Wow. The depth from this team. There are so many different players that can beat you for NC State. First it was Mimi Collins and Madison Hayes. 21 points for the seniors. When you talk about this NC State team, Kelly, you have to talk about their balance, and it has been on display in this game today. Isaiah James only has four points, and River Baldwin is out with injury, and other players have stepped up. Madison Hayes, who does average double figures, of course, has 21 points in this game, a career high for her. Jen, when you talk about the balance on this NC State team, it reminds me of their ACC championship teams that Westmore has had, those three straight ACC titles. It's a similar makeup. Amor, a little short on the shot. High expectations for this NC State team that, might I remind you, was unranked in the AP poll in the preseason, became the first team in the history of that poll to make the top five with being unranked in the preseason before the end of November. Rivers a little short on her drive. King fighting for the basketball and Look, it is crunch time right now for Virginia Tech because this team, very high expectations as well for Kenny Brooks. Preseason pick to win the league for the first time after winning their first ACC tournament championship last year. They try to find a way, and I think especially, as you've said a number of times, on the defensive end right. to keep NC State from getting too far ahead. Rivers out of bounds. It'll be Virginia Tech basketball. And that's the difference from Wenzel on Sanaya Rivers using the baseline as a second defender. That's the stop they need. Now let's see if Virginia Tech can capitalize on the offensive end. Karis Baker, Carly Wenzel both on the floor for Virginia Tech at the moment. Along with Georgia Amor. Kitley against Collins. That's a good look. Yeah. She went to the rim, just missed the layup. Virginia Tech has missed six or seven layups today, and that's been the difference in this game in many ways. King defending Brooks, takes it away. Wenzel is waiting for help. Amor came streaking down the left. Kitley cleans it up again. I think Wenzel was looking for a shooter, but then realized she was so far ahead, she just needed to attack. And of course, Kitley just tirelessly working to get those offensive rebounds. 22 in the game for Liz Kitley. The crowd loud here in Castle. It is the first regular season sellout in the Kenny Brooks era. And we can pause for a moment because Isaiah James went down awkwardly. You see she's got her left calf wrapped. There's no foul on the play. The officials were just right there next to Isaiah James. The NC State ball on the sideline. Looked like an ankle for Isaiah James, but she seems to be telling the coaching staff she's fine. Don't even think about taking me out. <laughs> Eight seconds on the shot clock. Nine point lead for NC State. Brooks. shot out of bounds. She says it's tipped. Officials say shot clock violation, so Virginia Tech back in possession. NC State absolutely dominated this series early on. They won 22 of the first 23 meetings. Virginia Tech, though, had their first season series sweep last year. Amor spinning! Finishing for Virginia Tech! My goodness! Georgia Amor. That was an incredible move inside for the Aussie. And now she's got to get back on defense. Slows down Brooks just enough. Wenzel comes up with it. 
We've got numbers. Virginia Tech has numbers here. Karis Baker for three. They've missed those opportune threes, those threes that could change the game, that could bring the house down. They just haven't been able to convert those threes. But look at this play from Georgia Amor. What is this, Georgia Amor? <laughs> Spin on the block, going to the right, and the tough finish. I think scoring mode has been activated in Georgia Amor. Sometimes she's more in assist mode. And she is ready for this fourth quarter. And that one would have been a crowd silencer for sure. It doesn't go down for James. Another stop for Virginia Tech. Under five minutes. You cannot waste a possession. NC State has missed their last four, leaving that door open. Georgia Amor running through. She has that clutch gene, Jen. The moment is never too big for Georgia Amor. Five straight points, and the Hokies are within four. 7-0 Virginia Tech run. Crowd trying to help this Hokie team get it done against one of the four remaining unbeaten teams in the country. But Georgia Amor feeling it now for Virginia Tech. Trying to get the Hokies back in this one second half showing why she's one of the best players in the country. She has 16 points since halftime and she's done it in a variety of ways. She's knocked down three, she's gotten to the rim. Frankly, she's taken over this basketball game, gotten Virginia Tech back in the game and the crowd back in it, Jen. And that dynamic duo of Georgia Amor and Liz Kitley have been carrying the bulk of the load, as you can see for Virginia Tech. Will it be enough? to catch NC State. We've got four and a half minutes to find out. Hayes driving, blocked by Kitley. Big time defensive stop by Liz Kitley. 7-0 Virginia Tech run. Amor picked up her dribble, got in a little trouble. That's a good place to go inside to Kitley. Takes her time, draws the foul, and will make her first trip to the free throw line today. And there's Kitley getting to the rim, Jen, making them guard her. Here's Kitley on the other side. <laughs> That's perfect right there. Hands straight up, all ball, and Virginia Tech's off to the races. Using her pump fake, taking that contact and getting to the free throw line, but misses the first free throw. And, and Kitley is an excellent free throw shooter. She's at about 84% for the season. Virginia Tech as a team is first in the ACC in free throw percentage when they get to the line. Haven't been there much today. Three point game, Zania Rivers. All the way to the rim, Virginia Tech with a chance to tie. NC State taking some quick shots. If I had this kind of lead in this situation, I think I would take a little more time on offense. 8-0 run. The ceiling would have come <laughs> off this place if she hit that. <laughs> she said, my bad, my bad, Hokie fans. Well, and, and that's what you love to see, right? She's feeling loose. Yeah, it's a big moment, but she can handle it. I mean, this is your reigning ACC tournament MVP, most outstanding player in the regional when the Hokies went to the Final Four last year. NC State started two for two in this quarter, have missed their last six. James still can't get it to go, and that is number four on Mimi Collins. And Liz Kidney's defensive presence made Isaiah James pull up. Instead of taking it to the rim, she pulled up for a tougher jumper. And then, of course, the Hokies doing a great job grabbing the rebound and drawing a foul. Each team with just two team fouls as we get into three minutes and change to go in this one. Collins has four. It feels like Liz Kitley's got to get a touch. Amor. That's or not. not a bad option either. George Amor does defy logic, so <laughs> that also makes perfect sense. 10 a run. Hokies within one. Now 
for NC State. Zaniah Rivers out to James. Shot fake into the lane. Zoe Brooks was there, but Virginia Tech has it. The Hokies have stepped it up defensively. They just made Isaiah James take a very tough shot. They've held NC State scoreless for five and a half minutes. Virginia Tech has never led in this game. Kitley had a chance to take the lead right there. Zoe Brooks, open look in the corner. Won't go, NC State stays cold. Timeout on the floor. Under two minutes to play, what a game in Blacksburg. So Virginia Tech outscoring NC State 14 to four in this fourth quarter. What do you think they're talking about in that huddle, Kelly, that they want to do to finish this one out and knock off NC State, something no one has been able to do yet this season? Well, they have to keep up the defensive intensity. That's how they got back in this game. It's been Virginia Tech on defense, forcing NC State to take bad shots. On the offensive side, I still think you got to get Kitley a touch on every possession, make Mimi Collins guard with four fouls. Yeah, NC State starting this quarter made their first two shots. They've gone 0 for 9 since. That has allowed Virginia Tech to climb back into it on a 10-0 run, one-point game. This is what it's all about, Jim. This game has been so good, back and forth. Sellout crowd in Castle Coliseum, a top 15 matchup. This is ACC basketball for you. NC State got away with a single digit quarter in the second quarter. They had nine points. I think they need a few more to get out of this fourth quarter with the win. Baker! Offensive rebound. Amor! If you could feel it in this arena, there we go! Kinley gets the Hokies their first Offensive rebounding. Virginia Tech has been better grabbing O boards in the second half. None bigger than that one by Kitley. This NC State team really being tested now. 12 0 Hokey run. Amor nearly took it away. Five seconds on the shot clock. One minute, one minute, I don't think Zoe Brooks knows. Now she knows. She goes and gets her own rebound. Hit the rim just in time. Wow. Under she was not. Ago. She looked over at West Moore and he said, "Go." She wasn't aware. Tonya Rivers driving against Kitley. Karis Baker, the freshman, with a big rebound. More great defense at the rim by Virginia Tech's All-American post player Liz Kitley. Zaya James just chasing Amor, and now eventually the foul is called. NC State foul on number 10, Zaya James, her fourth personal foul. Virginia Tech finally took the lead on this possession. They missed two threes, but they continue to battle inside. Comes up with the offensive rebound, giving the Hokies their first lead of the afternoon. It was the fourth personal on Isaiah James, but just the 13th foul for NC State. Five second difference, shot clock, game clock. Amor, ball in her hands. Open look for three. And timeout immediately called, so NC State can advance the basketball. 7.4 seconds to go. I thought that was very smart by Westmore, not to keep fouling. Play that possession out. You would get at least four seconds or so left. He got seven, which is ideal. And of course, you know if you get the rebound, call timeout and advance the ball, and you're going to get a very good look here if you're NC State. So I thought that was really smart, the way they played it out, Jen. So now, NC State, Kelly, with the basketball, you assume they are going to advance it here. What are they looking to do in this possession? You're only down one. You can 
get anything offensively, even a trip to the free throw line would be good. So I think you get the ball in Sanaya Rivers' hands, let her attack the rim, put shooters on the corner, put Isaiah James, even Zoe Brooks, definitely Madison Hayes stays in the game, which looks like it will. And of course, Mimi Collins is capable. Have Sanaya Rivers attack the rim and then crash the glass. You want Sanaya Rivers to shoot the ball with, I would say, three seconds or so to go, so you give yourself a chance for an offensive rebound. Sanaya Rivers, the junior transfer from South Carolina, has 10.6 assists in the game. Will the ball be put in her hands? And she is a 71% free throw shooter, so keep an eye on that as well. NC State was pushed to the limit on Thursday against Florida State Seminoles. Had a chance to win it at the end of regulation. Another timeout will be called. Kenny Brooks time. wants to talk things over. It's a 30 second timeout. And what a way to start <laughs> off the day on wow. ACC Network for women's hoops. You've got a quadruple header coming your way. Obviously, this is what got you started right here from Blacksburg, Georgia Tech, and Pitt coming up next. Then you've got that Florida State team I just mentioned that pushed NC State to overtime on Thursday. Seminoles will travel to Clemson and BC, Syracuse. You do not want to miss the DeAsia Fair Show for Syracuse, finishing up the day at six. I love the gamesmanship here. Virginia Tech waited to see what kind of set NC State would be in and then called another timeout so they could talk about it defensively. NC State staying, staying with the same set of Zoe Brooks inbound to the ball. <laughs> and now we'll get another timeout. Well, timeout they each have Florida one left State after this as you're trying to keep track at home. I'm the not sure match. I've seen this before. <laughs> Three straight timeouts. Because this game has had such a good flow and been so back and forth, teams haven't really used their timeout. So they each had one to give there and you just continue to play that gamesmanship and continue to make NC State think about what they're gonna do, knowing they're in the position where they have to make something happen. NC State with a chance to win it on this final possession. 7.4 seconds left. You can bet this sellout crowd is gonna let them hear it. Brooks gets it into Collins. Sanaya Rivers with the basketball for NC State. Drives against Kaylee. It's good. Timeout, Virginia Tech. 1.9 seconds on the clock. Virginia Tech also can advance it here. Perfect play. Perfect execution by NC State. Get the ball into Mimi Collins. Let Sanaya Rivers get the ball with momentum, attacking the basket, and then an incredibly difficult finish for Sanaya Rivers over the 6-6. Liz Kitley with her off hand. That is beautiful basketball from NC State and Sanaya Rivers making a big time play. All right, well, you called that one pretty well. So let's go down on the other end now. It's Virginia Tech's turn. Less time to work with, under two seconds. Where are the Hokies going? Under two seconds is plenty of time to catch and shoot. I think your best bet is to get the ball to Kitley somewhere in that 15-foot range and let her either take one dribble and shoot or shoot her fadeaway because you don't have that much time. If you had more than, and they just reset to 2.1 seconds. If you had more time than that, I think I would go A more. But in this situation, I would prefer to get the ball to Kitley and let her go quick and score. I could still see him going to Amor though, because she's so fast with it, but I, I would go to Kitley. Go to Kitley, let her make a play. NC State will take their time out to talk it over. <laughs> he is, what's interesting though, is they had Amor inbounding it. So with Amor inbounding it, that makes me think that she'll inbound it and then take a handoff and try to go to the rim and take a floater of some sort. So. Kitty Brooks is a little harder to figure out, I think, in this situation. It's either going to be Kitley or a handoff to Amor. That's where I'll hedge my bet. The last time Virginia Tech knocked off a top three team, it was against NC State. 
Okay, he switched it up, by the way. He took Amor out. Amor is no longer in basketball. She's now in the play. So we'll see and how Zoe Brooks changes. hedging down to guard Kitley. Woo. Here we go. Hokies inbound. Go to Kitley. Rivers will have to hoist it from the car. 